So I'm going to show you something cool that you can make with spare pieces of wood. This is walnut. It's two inches thick. And of course you can see that there's both the, um, the heartwood and the sapwood, which is, you know, a lot of your offcuts are going to be that, especially when you're working with live edge stuff. So I've got some birthday parties coming up with family. This is my niece's, this is for my niece's husband. Um, I'm not really sure if he drinks, but you know, gosh, everybody can, you can get sodas in, uh, in bottles that need a bottle opener. Now that's my angle grinder with a, you know, that carbide shaping disc. And this is my sand or polisher that you've seen me use a lot. It's just quick sanding. That's why I really like this. So of course, the other one was super gritty. This one is 80 grit, but it's fast. I mean, you can really take away material with this. And so, of course, I mean, this uh, This is not a how-to. I'm not saying you should do this, but you got to be really careful when using hand tools like this. The reason why I'm outside right now under this little overhang is because I just put polyurethane on a bath tray, and I didn't want to get dust on it, and it's also raining. So now I'm just cutting a hole all the way through because I thought that would just look cooler than just an indention like I did on the, the Thor Cutery board. If you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. I made a, a Thor Cutery board that was also a bottle opener. I tell you what, a drill press is an essential tool. Fortunately, this is my father-in-law's. They're letting me use their shed. I believe that's one inch. Yeah, of course, you've got to compare whatever bottle opener hardware you get. So I wanted something to just have an opening, but didn't wasn't as wide as the bottle opener hardware. So of course, I went mostly through till it poked through, and then turned it around so I wouldn't get tear out. Again, this is this is dangerous. I'm not saying you should do this. That's a round over bit. And then now I'm sanding. Started with 80 grit. This is my random orbital. Now I do have that squishy pad, whatever you call it, in between the sander and the sandpaper. So that really helps you do contours. I know they sell like specialized sanders for that, but man, I'm on a budget. So, so 80 grit all the way to 240. I think I'm just showing you 80 grit. Sorry about the camera going in and out of focus. And I know I need to repair this little platform. I'm so focused on building other things, I'm not worried about that. Now, cool thing about this shed is uh, my wife and I got married on this property, and here's a picture of us in front of this shed. Now we've got four beautiful girls, and uh, that's why this is called E and A Builds. Their name starts with E and A's. Two E's, two A's. So trying to clean out that hole there. You know, it just takes a little time. Then I switch to sandpaper. Yeah, I've, I'm yeah, I'm not a sandpaper expert, but I did get the Amazon brand, and uh, it's very affordable. I I don't have any issues, any complaints about it. And again, it just takes time. Now you'll see that I didn't like perfectly sand this. There are some. Um, yeah, you can see some saw marks. You can see the angle grinder marks when I'm done, but I like rustic. So I poked a hole with a screw. And I'm angling this away from the hole just because I want the screw to, to really have something to hold on to. And maybe you would choose a smaller hole, but uh, I think this will work just fine. Now, I did have to buy these extra screws, these longer screws, because I just didn't trust the ones that came with it. And I'll show you those in a moment. I did get these off of Amazon. I think they were really affordable. So there's the screws that came with it, very small. I didn't trust them to, to keep it attached, especially when you're putting so much leverage on these to open bottles. Tighten those as well as I could. Already pleased with how that looks. I thought it was just a unique shape. So I'm putting mineral oil on it. I'm showing you just the mineral oil in this video, but I do plan on going back with the Butcher Block Conditioner. I think it's from Howard's. I think that's the name. And uh, it has beeswax and carnauba wax. So I'm just going to let this soak in for a while. And you'll see me wipe it off and, and wait for that in shot of how this looks at the end of the video. So 
So I did end up pouring it in the hole. You'll see me do that and then just rotate it around so it could really cover that inside. The inside's pretty much just ingrain, so it really soaks up that oil. Yeah, there we go. Trying to get the camera in focus. There we go. So the possibilities are endless. Different shapes, different woods from all your offcuts. I'll see if I can somehow do it with one inch offcuts because I have a lot of those. Alright, let that soak in for a little bit. Now wiping that off. Again, you can see some, some of the rough sawn marks, some of the angle grinder marks. There was that little dab. I don't know if that was super glue or epoxy that got on that piece, but there's just that little dab. I should have sanded out better, but there it is. Hope you like it.